Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I took this shot of Andromeda using my current landscape Astro setup, which is a Samyang 85mm 1.4 and my Sony a7 III and just a tripod. So no uh, tracker, no long lens, anything like that. I'm just shooting that with, with this. Now, what got me into um, deep space photography, astrophotography, is the ability to be able to just stay at home, have a beer and shoot from your garden as opposed to having to drive for hours uh, when I go and shoot my landscape astrophotography. So that's what made me interested in this. Also, I, the, the photos look amazing. It's definitely something I wanna get into further down the line, but it's yet again, another big investment to make. So it's, it's probably not gonna happen anytime soon. So in the meantime, I am going to be able to shoot Andromeda and things like the moon, stuff like that. So in this one, I'm going to show you how to shoot a picture of Andromeda using this setup and using some free software called Cyril. So let's get into it. First things first, I'm out in the garden, I'm setting up and what I'm using is an app on my phone and that's called Skyview. And I have paid for um, the full version of it, which was like two quid, I think, but you can get Andromeda on the free version of it. So download that one. I'll see if I can find a link to the, uh, on the app store to it. I'll put it down below. And then I'll also put down below the link to the Cyril software, which is also free, which is great. Yeah, so basically all I'm doing is I'm setting up and then I'm using my, um, I'm using this app, it's got an augmented reality and it shows you where in the sky, if you search for Andromeda, it shows you where it is. So what you need to do is just align your camera phone with your camera and then see if you can find Andromeda. Uh, once you see it, it's, it's, you can see it with the naked eye if it's dark enough, but once you see it on the back of the camera, you can actually tell that this thing is clearly absolutely massive, which is why I'm able to see it with an 85 mm lens. And um, to get focus, what I'm doing is I'm just punching into the brightest star I can find and then getting that focus as close, make it as small as possible in the screen to make, um, to make it a pinpoint, to make it in focus. Right, okay, so then what I'm doing, once I've found Andromeda, I want to get that in the middle of the frame. This is not ideal at all how I've got it. It's, I've got the fence on one side and I've got the house roof on the other side. You don't want that, it's not going to help us later, but for the purposes of this, we'll get away with it. Okay, so we're finding where it is, we found it, and what I'm going to do is, with this being like my, this is like my third attempt at shooting it, and um, what I found in the previous two attempts was in the first one I shot 50 frames and then stacked them. And the second one I shot 250 frames and then stacked them. And they both came out looking the same. So I don't know, I don't know a lot about this. This is new to me, but for the purposes of this, again, I'm just gonna shoot 50 frames. Now, I thought that by shooting more, I would get a better image, but I didn't. So Anyway, for, for starting out first time, I'm gonna shoot 50 frames of Andromeda. You wanna keep it right in the center. The settings that I shot it on was ISO 2000. I shot at wide open at 1.4, and I was shooting for four seconds for each one. And then, as I say, I took 50 shots of that. And then the next thing we're gonna do, which um, will help the software to uh, remove any hot pixels, and I'm gonna pretend I know what I'm talking about. Um, you wanna take sets of frames that the software will also use to stitch the image together called uh, dark frames and called biases. Now the dark frames, what you, all you need to do is just stick the lens cap over the end of the camera and keep the settings exactly as they are and then shoot, I've only taken 10 shots, but again, you could take up to 50, take as many as you like kind of thing, but again, I've found doing these 10 is enough or I just held my hand over the end of the lens so that it was blacked out. That one I think removes the hot pixels. Now the next one are called bias frames and then all you do is you just crank the shutter all the way to the fastest shutter that your camera does. So I think it's like 8,000 I was shooting at, yeah. And then we're gonna shoot another 10 frames of that. Right, so next then we're gonna jump into the computer. I'm gonna screen record and I'll show you the software. So, what we're gonna do is either on your hard drive or like me, I'm having to use an external hard drive and we're gonna, in that hard drive, I'm gonna put a new folder, I'm calling it stacking, call it whatever you want, but then within that, that folder, you need to put another three folders, one of them called biases, one of them called darks, one of them called lights. 
And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop those images that we've just taken into those folders. So the light frames are the 50 shots of Andromeda that we've taken. The dark frames are the 10 shots where we've covered the lens with the same settings. And then the biases are those where we've cranked the shutter up right to the top and then we'll drop those into that folder. Okay, once we've got that folder, I am going to drop, I think I said this already, I'm going to drop a link down to Cyril down below anyway, but download it. Then we're going to open that software and it, after you've set up those files, all you need to do is point it to those files so that it knows where it's going to be. All you do is then come down to this where it says change directory and you're going to choose where you've set that folder and just set it onto that folder. So that's what we're gonna do. Right, cool, so once we're in, all you literally do, once you've got Cyril open, is go to scripts and then choose DSLR processing, no flats. Um, flat images is another thing you can do which will again help the software. And to be perfectly honest, I don't fully understand it, um, but I know that you need to have light, soft light onto the lens with the same settings. Confusing, not for me and not for the purposes of this. So uh, yeah, so all you need to do is just choose the script, no flat, and just leave it to do its thing. Now, it does take quite a while. This one's taken half an hour in total. Um, so you wanna go away and come back later. And, um, oh, what's that in the background there? Little shameless plug there. Follow me on Instagram. Okay, so we are done. And once it's done, what it will do is it will create a file called .fit in that folder that we've just created at the start. And you can see it there, result.fit. And then all you need to do is go into file, go to open, and then we're gonna change this to fit files, and then we're gonna open that file. And what it's gonna do is show you the image that it's taken. Now, it looks black at first, and this is the beauty of this software it does the imaging processing basically for you. You just need to do a few clicks. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So these, these images, you've got the RGB on the right and the, I don't know what it is, image on the left, or the different channels images on the left. Or well, the first thing you wanna do is click on image processing and we're gonna to go to histogram transformation. And then all you need to do is click this button here which is the apply auto stretch algorithm. So basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna push the histogram into the middle and that will then bring out the image, the color in the image. Okay, so that's done, we're just gonna click apply. And you can see there my RGB image, which is the final image on the right hand side, it starts off really green. So the next thing you're gonna do is go back to image processing and remove the green noise. Just click apply. There you go, you can see that that's gone blue now. Next one, we're gonna click color calibration, and color calibration. And then with this one, the first one that you're gonna do is gonna choose the black, so what you need to do is you need to find a section of the image without many stars in it, which will be a black background. You click onto the image on the, uh, on the left-hand side, the red channel, and just make a little box, so somewhere where it's dark and where there's not many stars. Click Use Current Selection, and then click Background Neutralization. Then the next one is we're gonna set the white balance. So I'm gonna use the Andromeda in the middle there. So again, just draw the box around it, click on Use Current Selection, and then click Apply. Next thing to do then is to try and make the color a little bit more normal. So we're gonna to go to color saturation and I'm just gonna click apply. And then the next one, I'm gonna to go to the, what is it actually called? Asynth transformation, yep. And then what this does is this adds more black into the image. So see as I'm dragging this along, it's getting darker and darker. So that'll do for this one, I'm just gonna click apply. Next thing then is go to background extraction and that's gonna take away some of the stars to bring out the Andromeda a bit. I'm just gonna click generate and you see where it hits these um, dots all along the screen. You just wanna make sure that there isn't a dot on your Andromeda and you can remove them with a right click or add them with a left click. But in this one, that looks fine to me. So I'm just gonna click apply. You can see that's made the image a bit warmer again, it's gone a bit orange. So I'm gonna go back up to that asynth transformation, whatever it's called. I'm gonna drag that black point along, keep going, keep going. Then again, I'm just gonna click apply. And that is it, we're, we're almost there. You can see Andromeda in the middle. So what I'm gonna do now is file and save as, and I'm gonna change that to a TIFF file. I'm gonna chuck it on my desktop and then leave the settings as they are there and then click save. And that's it. The software basically does it all for you. It's really, really easy. So what I'm gonna do now is drag that. Oh, and there's a um, picture of a full moon that I've been taking as well with this 85. I've been enjoying this recently. Anyway, so we're gonna import that into Lightroom. 
And once it's in, again, I, I don't really know what I'm doing. Like I say, this is like the third time that I've done this. So if anybody who's, um, who's a lot more well-versed in this wants to drop any hints down below or get in touch to let me know the things that I'm not doing right, then, then please do. So the very first thing that I'm gonna do is crop this image and we're gonna crop and bring Andromeda a lot, lot closer. And there you go, that looks pretty cool. And then all I'm gonna do now is, again, like I said, I don't really know what I'm doing, I'm just gonna piss around. So I'm gonna mess with the sliders until I get to a point where I'm happy with it. Um, actually, I found doing the curve does help. And I found playing with the contrast and um, using a few radial filters on it has really helped along with the dehazing. And what I've also done is put a massive vignette on and then also done an inverted um, mask there so that I can take the clarity down and make the images all around it a little bit blurrier. And yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm reasonably happy with how that's going along. And yeah, that, that'll be it for the final image. So I'm happy with that, I'm gonna export that. And there we go. For a, uh, you know, sort of no deep space setup. So it's just literally my 85 mm lens, my lens, my camera and my tripod. You can get an image of Andromeda, which I thought was amazing the first time I did it. So I hope this is helpful. If you do end up using this, and please tag me if you post it on Instagram or anything like that. I'd love to see the images that you make. And um, so that's it for this one for this week. Thank you very much for watching. I'll hopefully see you again very soon. Take care.